Floral Park Memorial in 1989. She went on to obtain her bachelor degree with honors in the arts in 1993 at Moravian College in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and later received her master's degree with honors in communication arts in 1998 from NYIT. She currently owns a photo studio in Merrick, New York, and was recently awarded the Merrick Merchant of the Year. maybe Monet. Then my thoughts started diverging and I thought, hmm, maybe Michael Jackson <laughs> or Lady Gaga. Or how about Steven Spielberg? Maybe James Cameron. Avatar was pretty impressive, right? And since we are speaking in a library, then I thought maybe J.K. Rowling or Stephanie Meyer. How about that team Edward and team Jacob? And Steve J Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg were in the running too. Aren't the iPad and Facebook works of art? Who was I going to pick a quote from? But then I figured I didn't need one. And do you know why? Because you are all creative, intelligent, and newly inducted members of the Arts Honor Society. You all get the point. Each of the people I mentioned above is an artist in his or her own right. Art as we know it has taken on so many different shapes and forms in today's world, and it literally has no limit to where it can take you. Influence your life, shape your future, and inspire those around you. While the definition of art and who qualifies as an artist is constantly changing, one thing remains constant, and that is the certainty that each and every single one of you in this room today is on the right path to being exactly any kind of artist you wish to be. And how am I so sure about that? Because that's exactly what happened to me 23 years ago. I was right here, sitting in your seats, being inducted into the same, same Art Honor Society. So it is an especially great honor to be standing before you today. My family had moved to Queens from Long Island, uh, Queens to Long Island in 1984. My family had moved to Queens to Long Island in 1984, and I remember my first day at this high school like it was yesterday. I was convinced that this was an elite private school because there was no bars, at, uh, no bars on the doors and windows. There was so much space and light inside the hallways and everything smelled so clean and fresh. I couldn't believe that this was going to be my new school. And what was even better was that we actually moved right across the street on 191 Locust Street, which was really awesome because I could actually hear the school bell ring while I was still in bed. <laughs> so you've all heard this saying before, we are the masters of our destiny. But what doesn't always get mentioned is before you become a master, you are first a student. And there are so many lessons to be learned from the different teachers throughout our life. And I can confidently say that it was the teachers here at this very high school that put me on the path to the, my future in visual arts. What does that say about Floor Park Memorial School, um, High School and the Art Honor Society? It says that we have a long and proud heritage, which we are eager to understand, and more importantly, to share. My initial interest in art was fairly superficial. I thought art was fun, an escape from reality. In fact, I really never paid too much attention to it until my senior year, when my art teacher, Ms. Caporell, who is still with us here today, so we're honored to have her here today, and Ms. Carlson, suggested I apply for the St. John's University Art Scholarship Program for high school seniors. They even helped me put together my very first portfolio. 
You can imagine how shocked I was that I was actually chosen to participate in this unique program. This opened an entire new world for me. I'd like to share it with you one of the first pieces I created as part of the program. So any guesses to what it is? Okay. <laughs> it's actually, I think you're right. It's actually a bug's eye view of the inside of a hair dryer. Kind of random, right? However, this piece forced me to realize that we are all a small piece in this big, vast world, and yet we are a very important piece of this puzzle. Without each little piece, the world would be incomplete. So my first piece of advice for you all is learn the basics, even, even as trivial as it may seem. Even if it may seem pointless, and you have no idea of its practical application in your future. You see, my first job was at a library, stacking books and returning them to the shelf and researching with the infamous card catalog. And I sh I'm sure some of you look a little bit you know, puzzled. What's a card catalog? Maybe Ms. Rosenblum can share with us what a card catalog is. Ms. Rosenblum? Oh, please. A uh, card catalog was a um, big wooden piece of furniture that had cards in it. And when you wanted to find a book by title, by author, or by subject, you actually looked through the cards to find where it would be in the library. And now, of course, that is all on computer. <laughs> and we don't have to do that anymore. Thank you. Thank yep. That's correct. That's correct. But what I learned there was research skills I needed for various projects. Now, remember, this was way before the internet and Google. So today, I still do research before any major photo shoot or event. It just mentally prepares me to envision and compose different poses. Like my favorite impressionist painter, Claude Monet states, no one is an artist unless he carries his picture in his head before painting it. So my second job was at the computer lab in, uh, in, in college. Again, not my career path. Well, at least in the late 80s it wasn't. This gave me the skills to troubleshoot any software, hardware, or even network-related problem. Like most computer users, I troubleshoot almost every day. Technology is amazing until it doesn't work. So while still in college, I moved on to take a position as a customer service rep at a local print shop in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Again, customer service had nothing to do with my career in the arts. But here I learned lifelong lessons that I carry with me until today. And the number one key fact I learned was the customer is always right. Remember this. And then I landed my dream job at an advertising agency in Manhattan. That's when my love affair with photography began because the agency had an in-house photo studio and I couldn't stay away from the cameras. And well, maybe the models had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell your dad. <laughs> but regardless, through all these experiences, I realized that eventually the dots connected. Every step and lesson learned led me to where I am today. And I use all of my experience collectively and daily at my photo studio. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward, but it was very, very clear looking backwards. You have to trust the dots. Some, you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in the future. You have to trust in something. You have to trust in yourself. And you need the confidence to follow your heart, even if it leads you down a well-worn path. And with Valentine's Day just celebrated, it brings me to my second story, a story about love. You have to love what you do. But it always wasn't a bed of roses. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears involved. I remember working 14-hour days, standing on my feet all day long, lugging around heavy equipment while experiencing throbbing legs and feet. My husband would often ask me if it was worth it. And no matter how much my shoulders hurt or how exhausted I was, my answer was always a resounding yes. Yes, it is worth it. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I truly loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. You may be sitting here right now wondering, what am I going to do when I graduate from high school or college? What am I going to do for the rest of my life that is meaningful and that will make me happy? Well, don't worry. When I was sitting there, I had no idea either. You don't have to have the answer right now, not today or even tomorrow. As with all matters of the heart, you'll know when you find it. It keeps getting better and better as the years roll on, like any great relationship. Keep looking. Don't settle. You are all artists. You are creative and you have the passion. 
and passion gives you the energy to strive to be the best you can be. Now my final piece of advice to you in the words of a woman who has inspired millions. Everyone has a talent. Use it to serve the world. I hold this so close to my heart and try to give back at every opportunity that I can. And if it's one thing that you take away from this talk today, let this be it. Giving back and sharing what you have learned is the best service you can do to yourself and to your community. And being a part of the Art Honor Society puts you in an elevated position to begin to do just that. So I'm going to stop with the talking now and ask you to do some thinking. What does it mean to you to be a member of the Art Honor Society? Does it mean another line for your college resume? Does it mean prestige amongst your peers, by your parents, by your teachers? Or does it signify something about the values you uphold? Is it a testament to your skill and creativity, your vision, your inspiration? Whatever being a member of the Floor Park Memorial Honor, Art Honor Society means to you, know for sure that this is just the beginning of what will be a fascinating, inspiring, and successful future in the arts for each and every one of you. And I leave you with my final thought. Remember, life is a blank canvas. Throw all the paint on it you can. Congratulations again to each and every one of you on your achievement and your role to eventual creative success.